Imagine a blockchain built by some of the brightest minds from Meta's DM project. Engineers who were determined to take their learnings and create something even more revolutionary. That blockchain is Sui. It was launched in May 2023 and Sui has quickly gained attention for its unparalleled speed, unique architecture and innovative use of the Move programming language. But what exactly is Sui and why is it being called the Solana Killer? In this video, we'll break down everything you need to know from its founders and origins to its standout features, metrics and challenges. Stick around to the end to decide if Sui is a blockchain to watch this cycle. First, what is the promise of blockchain? And in particular, what is the vision of Sui? Well, at Sui.io, the promise of blockchain fulfilled, this is what they've written. You can read along, but essentially blockchain favors people over platforms, cutting out untrustworthy middlemen and protecting your privacy. Direct digital ownership, so you actually own what you own, giving you greater control and allowing us as a people, as a species, to realize the value of the internet. The Sui founders believe in this vision, and this is what they say. We believe in this vision, but we believe it must be delivered with the utmost security, accessibility, and creativity. That's why Sui was created. The story of Sui begins with Meta's ambitious DM project, originally called Libra. Announced in June 18, 2019, Libra aimed to create a blockchain-based digital currency and global payment system. As a bit of TLDR and spoiler alert, it was shut down by the US government. Now, the reason why I bring up Libra is basically because this team, the Sui team, they were working on Libra since 2019. So even though Sui is not that old, they've actually been working in this field and on the same kind of goal for quite some time. In Meta's blockchain division, they had a team of engineers, including some of the Sui co-founders. They were deeply involved. The Sui co-founders include Evan Chang, Sam Blackshear, Adini Abadan, and others. As we can see here, Evan Chen is the CEO, Sam is the CTO, and Adini is the CPO. Their work focused on developing the Move programming language, a secure and developer-friendly language designed for managing digital assets and writing smart contracts. Move was officially introduced with the Libra white paper and became integral to the project. After DM shut down in 2022, these engineers carried their expertise into creating the Sui blockchain. Mistin Labs is behind Sui. Sui's mainnet launched in May 2023. If we have a look at Masari, we can see that they're backed with over $300 million in funding a Series A and a Series B that happened in 2021 and 2022. They have top tier investors like A16Z, Binance Labs, and Coinbase Ventures. Also, they had FTX or Alameda Research as an initial backer. However, of course, anything related to Sam Bankman-Fried went bankrupt, and those tokens, those Sui tokens, are actually bought back from Alameda Research and FTX by Mistin Labs. The Move programming language is one of the key innovations behind Sui. It was initially developed at Meta by Sam Blackshare and a team of researchers for the Libra project in 2018. Move was designed to be secure. You can of course read the white paper if you're so inclined, but here are some of the key points. It was designed to be secure by prioritizing safety in managing digital assets, flexible, allowing developers to create advanced smart contracts, and developer-friendly, offering intuitive tools to speed up DAP development. After DMs shut down, Move became the foundation for Sui and Aptos. Aptos is another layer one blockchain with its object-based architecture. Talking about objects, something like an NFT or a DeFi position, probably a little bit too complex for this video, but it's tracking these as opposed to account balances. It opens up possibilities for efficiency and scalability. So what makes Sui stand out in the crowded blockchain space? Well, for one thing, of course, the Sui tokens doing very, very well. We'll touch on that a little bit later. But the other thing is it has unique architecture and use of parallel transaction processing. Once again, a little bit too complex for this video, but essentially transactions can go through a lot faster and it can handle a lot more transactions per second. Transactions are either simple or complex. Simple is something very easy, like I send you 10 USDC. Complex is more complex than a simple transfer. There's also some impressive metrics. If we have a look at Sui Scan or any Sui Explorer, we can see that there's a decent number of transactions flowing through this blockchain. And in fact, during testing, Sui achieved 297,000 transactions per second with 100 validators. It also has a finality time faster than Solana for simple transactions. Right now, we can see the TPS is 63, with the peak in the month being 176, and the average each day per second, 75. Now the peak that I've actually managed to find on mainnet was 5,414 transactions per second on July 27th, 2023. So the difference between this and 297,000 is still quite a lot, but essentially it's still able to run very good, very high TPS. There's of course a lot more things to consider other than just TPS, but TPS is very, very important. Even right now on Solana, the TPS needs to grow substantially because right now, 
it's actually getting more and more expensive to send a transaction. Soy's ecosystem is rapidly growing with some impressive statistics to back up its momentum. It has, at present, 106 validators. It's more decentralized than many other networks, but ideally it would have a thousand plus by the end of 2025 in a perfect world. We also have total accounts at 65 million and over 700,000 active addresses. It reflects a thriving user base. There's also some decent ecosystem growth. There's partnerships with giants like Alibaba Cloud and Red Bull Racing, and they've helped Sui expand its presence in both Web 2 and Web 3. With Alibaba Cloud, this is the data that we have. Solana has a similar thing with Google Bigtable. And with Red Bull Racing, it's very obvious to see it's Sui on the Formula One cars. There also appears to be a push for gaming with the Sui Play device. I pre-ordered one of these. These are coming next year. But essentially, this is a bit of a next-gen gaming handheld console. I believe the goal here is to have a Web 2 device that also is connected to Web 3. In gaming, gaming is massive, and then you're allowed to actually hold an asset and have true ownership of the asset. It's a start in the right direction. Gaming, of course, takes a whole lot of time, so we'll have to cover really, really good games coming out on Sweet Play in the future. But essentially, you're unlocking exclusive perks and rewards. Let's quickly touch on the Sweet tokenomics and utility. This is the backbone of the network, of course, serving several key functions. Staking. Users can stake their tokens to secure the network and earn rewards. Currently, you're earning rewards at around 2.7% per year. So it has very low inflation compared to other networks. So it's also used in transaction fees. They're very, very low, though, thanks to its efficiency. And storage fees. So Sui innovates by allowing users to pay storage fees for transaction data, with the option to reclaim some of these fees by deleting unused data. And of course, governance. Token holders have voting power to influence the network's future direction. The total supply of Sui is 10 billion, and these were the initial tokenomics at launch. The community reserve here at 50%, Mistin Labs Treasury, 10%, Community Access Program and Amp Testers, 6%, investors 14 and 20 percent for early contributors now let's have a look and see what the token is doing in terms of price because that's probably why you're interested in it this is comparing sui to aptos remember sui and aptos the core team behind sui and aptos they both came from dm they use the move programming language now aptos has for whatever reason i'm unsure it has not had the same kind of explosive growth of late this is over the last one year and of course we've only been in a really exciting bull market for a little bit thus far. What we can see here, comparing them side by side, this is the 5th of August, Sui was around 57 cents, and Aptos at $5.3. Since that time, it's just been explosion after explosion with Sui, and right now, what are we sitting on? Aptos has doubled, so it's around $13. Meanwhile, Sui is basically at $4. So it's gone from 57 cents all the way to $4, and Aptos has gone from $5.30 to $13. Clearly, there's a lot more attention on Sui. There are many comparisons to Solana as well. Now, the market cap of Solana is far higher. Therefore, it's very unlikely that it's actually going to outperform from this point. But if we go back to the same day, the 5th of August, we can see the price of Sol is $138. Sui is, of course, $0.57. Cents. And Sol has outperformed relative to Aptos, but it has not actually outperformed Sui, which isn't to be expected. Then if we compare it to Ethereum, Sui has significantly outperformed Ethereum. Another indicator that I like to use as a metric is Radar, which is with Twitter Premium. So if we have a look at dollar sign Sui, there's 137,000 posts in recent times. If we have a look at APT, which is Aptos, there's 20,000 posts. Let's quickly touch on some challenges and risks. Despite its many strengths, Sui, of course, faces some challenges. One is decentralization, as we mentioned before. With just 106 validators, Sui is less decentralized than competitors like Ethereum or Solana. Also, with token unlocks, if we have a look over here, we can see the fully diluted valuation is much higher. The total supply is 10 billion, and thus far, there's only just under 3 billion Sui circulating right now. This, of course, can lead to concerns about potential price inflation as they're released. Raul Pohl, who is on the Sui Foundation board and is very bullish, he has said this is a low float, high FTV token. Thus far the cycle, they don't typically do terribly well. Sui seems to be an exception. Of course, there's regulatory scrutiny, 
like all blockchain suite, must navigate an uncertain regulatory landscape. However, in general, we're starting to see a huge shift in US politics that start to favor crypto. A lot more of that should play out in 2025. Next, we've got competition. So we compete directly with other next generation blockchains like Aptos. And of course, they're competing with Solana in a sense. It doesn't use the same language, but they have the same kind of product market fit in a sense. But as we covered before, from an interest perspective, Sui is outperforming. So I don't see Aptos taking Sui's mindshare. Another challenge worth mentioning, but something I'm not bearish on, is the fact that Sui went down as a blockchain. Some people in the Solana community made a very funny joke. And that joke is, it's starting to follow in Solana's footsteps. Solana has gone down over 10 times in the last few years. The network gets more and more stable. But one thing that happens when you're running a high performance network, things do break as opposed to something running slower, like say Ethereum or Bitcoin. This is the official post from Sui right here on Twitter. The network went down for two and a half hours. This was the first time that it had happened. It was restored and then it was back working. Sui's future and adoption. So Sui's potential lies in the scalability and focus on user-friendly applications. Its move language also has advantages. The real question is, can Sui continue to innovate and capture a larger share of the market? In 2021, Solana had an edge with NFTs. This time, DeFi is irrelevant. We can see growing TVL over on Solana. The best place to see growing TVL is to go to DeFi Llama. Here we can click on Solana and we can see it's been growing in the past. You'll notice this right back here in the previous cycle. Don't worry about this going so high. This was essentially some very cheeky dApps, which are no longer relevant in the slightest. They were double and triple counting TVL. This is far more organic and correct right now with Solana being at 9.19 billion. If we have a look at Sui, we can see it's at 1.6 billion. So it's growing, not as fast as Solana, of course, but it's a younger network. The incredible thing is in one year, it's gone from 157 million to 1.62 billion. So this is exponentially growing. It's also worth pointing out here that Aptos has been growing as well. Aptos was launched before Sui. So this time DeFi is very relevant, but meme coins are the real use case at present. They are used heavily on Solana. They haven't really caught on yet on Sui. Sui could find a massive edge due to gaming, but good games take years to develop. However, there are other things that bring users. Airdrops. Sui has a lot less daily active users compared to other chains. A few big airdrops, maybe as an example, Bluefin and Sui Lend, and this can bring millions of people over as they start to search for the next big airdrop. And then they actually start to like the blockchain and they get stuck in and they start to use it properly. Now the Sui price. Have a look at this from Raul Paul. Raul says he owns both Sui and Sol, but obviously Sui should outperform. Now, why is this? There are many things that go into it, but essentially I believe unit bias. Since 2017, my experience has been retail firmly trust unit bias. So what does that mean? Right now, you could go and buy one Bitcoin for $98,000, one Ethereum for 3,800. However, it's better to buy Solana at $225 than it is to buy Ethereum. And it's better to buy Ethereum than it is better to buy Bitcoin based on the fact that it's a unit bias. It's a smaller number. Then if we scroll on down, if we go and find Sui, it's better to buy Sui at $4.09 than it is to buy Solana at $230 or $250. Sol at $250 just isn't as juicy as $4. Retail will really factor in the actual market cap. The market cap of Sui is almost 12 billion. If we come on up and have a look at Seoul, it's 107 billion. Now, I believe this will go significantly higher, maybe to half a trillion. And there's no reason why, in my opinion, and of course, not financial advice, Sui couldn't go to 100 billion or more. Back to Raul Paul. He believes Sui will outperform Solana, meaning $1,000 into Seoul right now, maybe that could be worth $4,000 at the cycle high. However, if it was put into Sui, it could be worth $10,000, maybe even more. Once again, this is not a prediction from me or financial advice. It's to inform you why we're seeing a lot of traction coming Sui's way. It's not just good tech that makes the price go up, of course. It's strong community incentives, good developer experiences, and a lot more. So Sui has made an impressive entrance into the blockchain space, but its journey is just beginning. Whether it will live up to the hype of being a Solana killer remains to be seen. But one thing is clear, Sui's innovative approach to blockchain technology sets it apart in a crowded market. It's outperforming Aptos, that's for sure. The other thing is there can be multiple winners in the crypto cycle. Finally, if you're new to this channel, here we don't just discuss crypto news, we also show you how to use the blockchain, which we think is far more valuable than just buying and selling Sui on Bybit. 
So subscribe because you will see a lot of tutorials which will help you to navigate the blockchain and use the chain as intended. And you may even get some decent airdrops or potentially grow your bags faster. Let us know what dApps you would like to see a tutorial on. The last question I'll leave you with, is SUI the blockchain of the future or just another hyped or overhyped project? <laughs>